In today's lesson, we're going to apply the math of conservation of momentum to two types of collisions, elastic and perfectly inelastic. Uh, for periods, for my odd periods, this is going to be due on Wednesday. For the even periods, this will be due on Tuesday. We're going to look at two examples today. The first example uh, states that a 5 kilogram ball rolls to the right at 3 meters per second and hits a 2 kilogram ball that is at rest. They collide and bounce off without deforming. Um, remember, deforming means to change shape. After the collision, the 5 kilogram ball continues to move to the right at 1.2 meters per second. What type of collision is this, and what is the 2 kilogram ball's final velocity? Now, when we have a problem that has a lot of uh, numbers and there's a lot going on, it's helpful to go ahead and draw a picture of what's happening. So let's imagine that in our before picture, Okay, uh, our big ball, the 5 kilogram ball one, is going to be rolling to the right, okay, and it's going to hit a smaller mass that is at rest. All right, so let's imagine that this is you and this is a little sibling or a little cousin, all right? So in the after, after this collision occurs, all right, it's going to make sense that you, all right, you're still going to be moving a little bit, all right? Um, but your sibling is definitely going to go flying to the right when you run into them. All right? So this is what our picture kind of looks like. Now for this qu first question of what type of collision is, this is, let's remember that whenever something collides and bounces off without deforming or changing shape, right, this is going to be an elastic, right, an elastic collision. So now that we know what's happening, we can go ahead and do some of the math. Uh, remember that we learned this equation for conservation of momentum that says that P A initial plus P B initial equals P A final final plus P B final. So our initial momentum of all of our objects added together equals our final um, momentum of all of our objects added together. But remember that each of these um, individual p terms, remember that momentum is the same as mass times velocity. So I'm going to go ahead and insert this into each of these different terms. So what we end up with is ma times va initial plus mb times vb initial equals our mass of A times our final velocity of A plus our mass of B times our final velocity of B. So this is what we end up for an equation. And we know our mass of A is 5 kilograms. We know its initial velocity is 3 meters per second. We know the mass of B is 2 kilograms and that its initial velocity is at rest, so zero. Uh, we also know that afterwards, after the collision, the final velocity of A is 1.2 meters per second. So we can go ahead and enter some of this stuff into our equation. So we know the 5 kilogram ball starts at 3 meters per second to the right, um, and our 2 kilogram ball is at rest, so zero meters per second. Right. And this is going to end up equaling, uh, we know that afterwards our masses are still the same, so 5 kilograms, and our final velocity of our first ball is 1.2 meters per second, plus uh, the 2 kilogram ball, whose velocity we don't know yet, that's what we're calculating, VBF. We want to know, oops, we want to know how fast it's going to end up going. Um, so we can go ahead, we want to solve as much stuff as we can before we solve for the variable. So we know 5 times 3 equals 15. Uh, we know 2 times 0 equals 0. We know that 5 times 1.2 is going to equal uh, 6, right? Um, and we can't multiply these yet together, so this just say, stays as 2 times VB comma F. All right. There's still some more that we can solve. We can say 15 plus 0 equals 15. Um, and I can't yet add these terms on the right side because remember that multiplication has to come before addition. So this is going to stay as 6 plus 2 times V B final. All right, so at this point we can go ahead 
um, and do some algebra. So we know that first we want to get rid of this adding 6. To get rid of that, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. All right, so these will cancel out. Um, 15 minus 6 equals 9, so 9 is e going to equal 2 times our velocity of ball b. All right, um, and now we have multiplication, so we can go ahead and divide by 2 on both sides. This will cancel out. And so we'll be left with just our variable, which is going to equal 4.5. And remember, this is velocity, so meters per second. So the final velocity of ball 2 all right, is going to end up being 4.5 meters per second to the right. All right, in our second example, a 7-kilogram clay ball rolls to the right at 2 meters per second, hits and sticks to a 3-kilogram ball that is at rest. What type of collision is this? What is the velocity of the combined clay ball after collision? Now, uh, this is, let's go ahead and draw our picture. All right, so before we have a 7 kilogram um, ball rolling to the right. It's going to hit a smaller ball, 3 kilograms, um, and that one is at rest. Afterwards, we're going to see that they stick together, so we're going to have an even bigger ball. All right? And um, imagine this is like you hitting that chair in class. All right? You're going to keep on rolling in the same direction, probably a little bit slower, though. So we'll see what happens for this. This is going to be a um, we know that they hit and stick together, so this is going to be one of our perfectly inelastic collisions. Now in this example, um, it's still the idea that the momentum before, all right, so momentum before is equal to the momentum after, all right? However, afterwards this time, it's actually a combined clay ball. So what this is going to look like is that the momentum of A initially, plus the momentum of B initially, ends up being the momentum of this entire ball. So P, A plus B, um, the final momentum. So if we were to go ahead and plug in our M times V, this is going to look like M A times V A initial, plus M B, V B initial. All right, and this is going to equal so it's combining together, so the mass of A is going to combine with the mass of B, right? and they're going to, as one, end up with a velocity. So it, this is going to be our velocity of the entire thing, final. So if we go ahead and plug a couple things in, so we know the mass of our first ball, MA, is going to be 7 kilograms. We know its initial velocity was 2 meters per second. We know the mass of the second ball is 3 kilograms and that its initial velocity at rest is 0 meters per second. All right. This is going to equal, if we add these two together because they stick and combine, all right, we know 7 plus 3 kilograms, all right, um, and we're solving for the final velocity of the combined ball. So here we can say 7 times 2, we can solve for that, 14 plus 3 times 0 is going to equal 0. Um, we know 7 t plus 3 equals 10, and this is still going to be times VA plus, oh sorry, V of the combined mass, finally. Alright, at this point we said 14 plus 0 is going to equal um, 10 times VA plus V final, the combined velocity. Uh, 14 plus 0 we know equals 14. So 10 times V of the combined mass, finally. All right. Um, and so if we're multiplying here by 10, we can go ahead and divide by 10 on both sides to get rid of it. Um, so what we will find is that the final velocity of the combined ball is going to be 1.4 meters per second. All right, that's it for today. Make sure you write good notes. That way you are ready for the homework quiz. See you later.